Good morning. How many is happy to be in the house of the Lord this morning? Wow, I, I sense this resurrection power in this place this morning. Amen. And it sounds like everybody is ready to celebrate the goodness of God. Amen. Praise the Lord. Could we just give the Lord an ovation of praise to begin the service today? Amen. We want to make all of you welcome. I want us to uh, recognize uh, some special people that are with us, uh, new newbies to our church. Uh, let me get them all up here. Nathan and Janet, amen. Uh, Jayla, Lynn, uh, we're back here. we got Randy and Mia here for the first time. Good to have you guys. Uh, Tarrant and Ashley back there, amen. Uh, Summer, Allison, uh, Kalissa right back here. Uh, we got Randy Facemeyer, Cody. Uh, good to have you. Thank you guys for being here today, amen. Let's give them a warm welcome this morning and say thank you for being with us, amen. We are so excited about what God is doing. We had new converts here last week. We had new converts uh, yesterday at the center. Uh, we thank God for all of those people that are making decisions to follow Christ. And uh, if you are a, a new believer that you've recently confessed Christ as your Savior, we have something that we want to get in your hands and help you with. It's a little booklet called First Steps. It will help you uh, on, your, on this new journey. And if you will be here on Sunday night, Wednesday night, we will actually find you a coach, a mentor that will walk through this with you. Uh, it'll only take a couple of sessions, and it will be a great faith builder for you. It will help you answer some questions about your faith and about where you go and how you progress uh, from the moment of salvation uh, into the pathway of Christ Jesus. So we want to be able to get this in your hands, and we want to get somebody, uh, a seasoned Christian, to help, you, help walk you through these first steps. So uh, remember that, new converts, be here on Sunday night, Wednesday night, and we'll get you a coach. Uh, uh, the, a mentor, somebody that can help you walk through this, but we want you to have this uh, as a thank you for uh, being here, as a thank you for accepting Christ Jesus, and we want to give you every tool available to us to help you along that way. Amen? Can somebody say amen? amen. Praise the Lord. God is good. I feel a sense of anticipation in the house of the Lord today. I believe that he's still a good God. Amen. I believe that he's still a healing God. Good to have Lisa and Kelly back with us. Amen. Praise the Lord. God is a restorer of our bodies and our soul. Amen. So thanks be to God for that. Amen. We're going to go to him in prayer right now. I do know that we have many that are sick. We need to continue to remember Sister Amy, uh, Bethany, all of that family's got strips, so we don't have children's church today. I'm sorry for that. We do have nursery uh, for the younger ones, but not children's church. So uh, I do apologize for that, but that's just something that happens occasionally. So uh, uh You'll just have to endure my preaching, young people. Amen. <laughs> Amen. So, but let's do remember them. Let's remember others that are sick in body, others, some that have uh, lost loved ones. They're bereaved and grieving still. Let's hold them up and remember them. Others that uh, are facing uh, procedures and other things uh, medically, uh, let's just pray that God would strengthen their bodies and sustain their faith through these trials. Amen. Because that's what it is, just a trial of our faith. That's great news from Chucky. He's probably coming home today, so we're thanking God for that as well. He's a miracle worker, God, working God, and I believe he wants to perform miracles right here today. Amen. I believe he wants to perform miracles right here today. So let's stand together. Let's invite the presence uh, of the Lord in this place. Let's invoke his presence. And then let's pray that God will just get us out of the way. So that the power of the Holy Spirit, resurrection power, could move in this place as He desires to do. Amen. Let's pray together. Father, we come to you today to give honor and praise and to glorify your name. We thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to be in your house and to be in your presence. I thank you for this body of believers, those that uh, have followed you for many years and those that are just recently been introduced to you. I thank you, Lord, that we can come together to lift up our hands and our hearts and praise unto you. Lord, we've come to celebrate your goodness, your mercy, your love, your divine grace that helps us through each 
each and every day. Lord, I pray that you will move in this place today. Every burden, every heaviness, every brokenness, uh, every sorrow, every pain, every affliction, Lord, that these people are enduring. I pray that as we enter into this service, into this worship, I pray that those things would just be surrendered at the foot of the cross. So, Lord, that for the next few moments, we can experience your divine glory in a very real and a very personal way. Move today, I pray, saving the lost, healing the sick, encouraging the discouraging, performing the miraculous, Lord, so that when we leave this place, we can know that we were in your presence. We didn't just come to a building or, or, or attend a service, but, Lord, we were met by the divine power of the Most High God. Move in this place today, and may every heart and every life be radically changed by what you do in this place today, and we will give you praise and glory and honor for it all in the name that is above every name, the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, we ask these things. And the church said, amen. Again, let's give him an ovation of praise. Let's shout glory to God. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. He is good. And his mercy endures forever. If our sisters would come, we're going to worship the Lord in giving. We're going to speak our confessions over our gifts and our giving. And lo let me just say thank you. Let me challenge you. I I've never said this in the last month or so since we, we, we've had new carpet and new paint and new chairs and all that. How many enjoy that? Amen. How many believe that it looks a little bit better in here with, with uh, uh, new carpeting and those kind of things? Well, praise God. Let's pay for it today, okay? That carpet wasn't free. <laughs> so let's pay for it today. Can we do that? Do your very best. Amen. Let's worship the Lord in giving. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come into your presence. Thank you for your beginning, sir. You have called us to take the gospel to Nicholas County, to West Virginia, and to the nations of the world. We are a growing body of believers, and there is no division among us. Because you are Jehovah Jireh, our provider, we have everything we need to fulfill the Great Commission. We are your people, filled with your spirit, and walking in your life. We are doers of the word, and not hearers only. We lift our hands to worship you with these gifts. As we give an offering today, we are thanking you for jobs and better jobs, raises and bonuses, sales and commissions. Settlements, estates and inheritance, interest and income, rebates and returns, credits and royalties, gifts and money, finding money, bills paid off, debts demolished. It's, it's offering time, and we are thankful that we have this opportunity to give. Hallelujah! 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 Hallelujah. I want to ask you all this morning, how, lo how many of you love the old traditional hymns? Yes. Yeah, well, I'm sorry to tell you, but you're in the wrong church this morning. <laughs> we're we're going to do a new song for you that Judy found, and we love it. Um, we're going to try to teach it to you, and uh, I'm going to try to learn it along with you because I don't really know it, but we'll do our best. Here we go. Let's go, Trey. searching for It's been a long time running from a messed up past that you can't go forward when you're looking back and I ain't looking back anymore Cause it called Thank you. 
perfect, but I found perfect love in the arms of woman. Got a heart of fire, but I Sing this song to my final breath. Let the weight of this world go. Gonna be no more tears, gonna be no more pain. When I see that smile on my Savior's face, I won't be walking, I'll be running home. Till my final steps Gonna sing this song till my final breath Let the weight of this world go Gonna be no more tears, gonna be no more pain When I see that smile on my Savior's face I won't be walking, I'll be running home
what it will be tomorrow when I see the victory. Yeah.
Amen. Give God praise in this house. Aren't you glad for the love of God? The love of our Heavenly Father. Praise His name forevermore. Woo! God is in this house this morning. I said God is in this house. Could we just give this praise team a, a hand this morning? What a great job. Thank you, musicians. Singers, thank you so very much. May I also remind you that the first Sunday of each month through the month of August, we will be doing a Sunday evening service at 6 o'clock, a full-blown worship and praise service. We do Sunday nights every night, every Sunday, but uh, most of those are just uh, uh, are, um, more discipleship and those kind of things. Uh, learning and, and growing in Christ, but the first Sunday of each month uh, through the month of August, we will be doing a night of worship. Uh, I've talked to a couple of people uh, about possibly coming this, uh, this coming uh, um, first Sunday in April. Haven't got any confirmations at this point, but whether they come or whether they don't, we have sufficient enough uh, musicians, singers, and preachers here in this church so that we can do that. Amen. So we hope that you will be there on those first Sunday night praise services and every Sunday night for Bible study and discipleship because we do need to grow in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. How many's happy to be here? Yeah. Why don't you look over and let somebody know you're glad they came. Amen. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. All right. Last week, we talked about the power of His presence. And today, 
I'd like to press into that subject just a little bit closer and give us some awareness of the portal of presence. I would like for you to realize that the access that we have to the divine presence of God is a gift of His grace given to those who are saved and true believers in Christ Jesus. Those who are sold out, whose mission is to share the gospel of Jesus Christ because they realize that they've been so radically transformed by Him that they cannot keep that to themselves, but they must share that in some way with others. Being true ambassadors of the kingdom of heaven. And I don't know about you, I was, I was raised up poor. Pope. But I tell you what, I stepped into a new dimension of the kingdom of God. Where God is my father, Jesus Christ is my elder brother, and I'm now part of a kingdom without end. And the riches of his glory are made available to us through the power of his presence. I'm glad to be an ambassador for that kingdom. I believe that I'm speaking to some people who are like-minded as those women who went to the tomb on that resurrection morning. They went along the path as morticians, ready to embalm and put spices and oil and ointments on the body of Christ Jesus. They went as morticians, but they left as missionaries. Because... They encountered the resurrection power of God and the resurrected Jesus himself, the one who had conquered death. And now their lives were, were, were marked by that experience and they had to tell others. Our lives marked By the power of the resurrected Jesus. We were just like them, servants to death, until we encountered life in Christ Jesus. Hebrews chapter 9 says, How much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without blemish, is able to purge our conscience from dead works that we might serve the living God. I'm here to tell you and remind you that I don't serve a dead God. I don't serve the gods of this world. I don't serve the gods of my past lusts. But I serve the God of all glory. The living God. So let's go ahead and get to the text. Second Peter chapter 1. Grace and peace be multiplied to you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. According as his divine power. Say, as his divine power. According as his divine power has given us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him that has called us to glory and virtue. Whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises that, we, that by these you might be partakers of the divine nature. Having escaped the corruption that is in this world through lust. And besides this giving all diligence... Add to your faith virtue, to virtue knowledge, and to knowledge temperance, and to temperance patience, and to patience godliness, and to godliness brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness charity. For if these things be in you and abound, they make you that you shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. I want to speak to you about the portal of prayer that brings us into the presence of God. Prayer is a definitive means by which we're able to access the power of His presence. 
not in a casual observance as an outsider, but to lay hold of his power. His divine power that gives us all things that pertain to life and to godliness. To lay hold of it and to allow it to lay hold of us. To the point that we're able to, that he's able to trust us with the power of his presence. To bear it out in the world today, just as those early believers and disciples did that followed Christ. To bear it out in a world that is desperate to know him. In praise, we can get caught up in His presence because our soul, our mind, will, and emotions are easily sensitized and moved with beautiful music and and wonderful uh, praise songs like we just encountered. In those expressions of worship and singing and raising our hands, we become enthralled with His presence. We feel his awesome glory. Sometimes even able to see it. Even carnal minded Christians can get up, caught up in that soulish realm of his presence where their mind, will, and emotions are touched by that. But yet there is a a deeper level and dimension of his presence that that not only we, we are able to encounter, but it encounters us and touches us and radically changes us and causes us to be conformed to the very image of Christ Jesus. This level, this dimension that I talk about is obtained by the believer through the purposely pressing in to the portal of prayer. It is that secret place with God. That place where we begin to commune with Him on a personal realm rather than corporate praise. It's intimate, it's personal, it's you and Him. It's that moment where you are quieted by Him, you are stilled by His presence, you're you're awestruck by His glorious power. Moses himself desired to know the mysteries of God. He wanted God to reveal himself to him. Of course, he had already seen the many manifestations of the miraculous hand of God. But he wanted more. He wanted to know the very essence and presence of God. And you know the story. Read Exodus 33. The people had sinned against God. They had made themselves golden calves and it had angered God. And God wasn't even sure he was going to go with them any further into the promised land. But Moses created a tent. It wasn't the tabernacle where worship, but it was the tabernacle of the congregation. This small tent he pitched outside the camp. And there he went and resorted to meet with God. And the people knowing their sin, knowing what what Moses was committed to do, that he had made this this tabernacle, this tent, and pitched it outside the the camp. And he goes out to to resort to meet with God. And the people were in such fear uh, of wondering what God's reaction was going to be to their sin. They stood in their tent door and watched Moses as he went outside into the the tabernacle of the congregation. And the glory of God came down down and Moses was able to speak with God face to face Moses said if you don't go with us then we'll just stay here he said either way I want to see your glory I want to know your power I want to know the essence of who you are 
Not just what you can do. I've already watched you part the Red Sea. I've seen you uh, bring water from the rock. I've seen you uh, feed us uh, uh, with man. I've seen all of these things, but I want to know you. The power of your presence. And God said, there's a place by me. In the cleft of the rock, and I will hide you there in this secret place. And I will place my hand upon you, and I will pass by you. And you will see everything that is behind me, but you shall not see my face. You won't see everything that is before me. He showed Moses all of the mysteries of the past. The creation and all that God had done. But he did not see the revealed face of God. The revealed face of God is none other than Jesus Christ himself. The mystery of Exodus 33, the full revelation of what God was saying to Moses and what Moses was experiencing as a result of that secret place in prayer, the light of understanding that comes through prayer is found in 2 Corinthians 4 and verse number 6. For God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness hath shined in our hearts to give us the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Moses did not see the face of God for Christ had not yet come. He saw uh, symbols and he saw types and he saw all kinds of things that pointed to the face of God but he did not see the face of God. But now we through an open face are able to see the power of God's presence through the face of Jesus Christ as his spirit indwells us and makes us one of his own. There's nothing more gratifying than the experience of God's presence, His power, His glory. To see it in the secret place. I alluded to this last week, but in the Song of Solomon's there, there, there's an allegory, a relationship between the king and the Shulamite woman. The king is incognito. The, she's not quite, she's not fully aware of who he is because he wants to know that her love for him is because of him and not because he's the king. So he doesn't fully reveal himself, but he desires to reveal fully to her who he is. In Song, Song of Solomon 2, verse number 14, he says, Oh, my, my dove, you're in the cleft of the rock, just like Moses was. You're in that secret place of the stairs. Let me see your countenance. Let me hear your voice. For your voice is sweet and your countenance is wonderful to look upon. He wants to reveal his glory to us. The power of his presence in that secret place. If we will just steal away from the congregation and get away from the crowd and get away from from the world and get away from everything that we call church and to hide ourselves in the secret place that we might know him for who he is that we might experience him on a whole new dimension and level he's not hiding from us but he's calling us into that presence because he wants our lives to be characterized with the power of his presence people say well why don't we see the miracles and the signs and the wonders that we because we won't steal away and find out who's the giver of those miracles in that secret place there are things that that Debbie and I can discuss and things that we share that that are not public they're, they're not even they're not even shared with our family that's it's that that intimate time that that time together where we can share the depths of our hearts and, and our souls with one another we need that same experience with God this the disciples of Jesus Saw they, they not only saw the manifestations of the power of God working through Christ Jesus. Those divine miracles that characterized his ministry. But the disciples knew and saw what others did not see. They saw and witnessed the intense communion between Jesus and his father. 
Things that the crowd did not see. They saw him rise up before it was day. To find that place of prayer. Where he would spend time communing with his father. They saw him time after time and hour after hour in diligent pursuit of the Father. So it was no surprise to them when he would emerge from that secret place, that quiet place, that private place in prayer. It was no secret to them when he would come out into the public arena and just lay hands on someone and immediately they were healed because they knew and understood the intense pr prayer that went into that. We would rather just go to the next big outpouring to have somebody else lay their hands on us than to press in ourselves to have the same level of power that God would work through us in the same way. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Jesus himself would teach in Matthew ch chapter 6. He said, when you pray, enter into your closet and shut the door and pray unto the Father which is in secret. And the Father which sees you in secret will reward you openly. Do you think the reward that he wants to give to those that will pursue him through the portal of prayer is another uh, jewel in the crown or, or something that is going to lay, be laid up for us uh, in the hereafter? Absolutely not. He wants to give to us those things, those rewards that we might display his power openly just as Jesus did. We need more miracles in the church. We need more manifestations of the miraculous power of God. It should not be the exception. It should be the norm of today's believers. That the miraculous is happening. Souls being saved. This has been a phenomenal week of new salvations. How you feeling, Ashley? You feeling like a new creature this week? Praise God. Praise God. Manifestations of healing. Restorations of marriages. Financial miracles, healing miracles, cancers drying up, diagnosis is being reversed because the power of God has been laid hold of through the portal of prayer. And we were so committed that nothing else mattered. It didn't matter if we ate or didn't eat, but we just know, knew that we needed to get into his presence because in his presence there was power to heal us, to save us, to deliver us, to set us free, to make us new. It is the grace of his power. That he would love to, for us to show forth to the world. We say, and it is true, everybody has a testimony. If you've been saved by Christ Jesus and your, your, your sins have been given, uh, forgiven and, and your life has been purged through the blood of Jesus Christ, you have a testimony. That just, that, that's just a given. But if you want the power of God's presence, because you don't have to say a whole lot when you walk in the room and people just start getting healed. Or, how about just walking into a room of devils and all of a sudden they start screaming and running and tearing out the door. You don't have to say, I belong to Jesus then. The evidence is clear that you've paid the price. 
that you found the portal of prayer and you've got in that secret place and you've closed the door and, and everything else is shut out because you, like Moses, got to the tabernacle and say, God, if you don't go for with us, just leave us here. We don't want the promises. We don't want the land that you, that you swore to our forefathers. We only want you. I only want you. And regardless of what these people have done, oh, God, be merciful and gracious. May this message bring revelation knowledge to each of us that we might know the portal through which we can begin to know God on a new dimension, on a whole new level. I'm grateful, as we, we heard in Sunday school class this morning, I'm grateful for the grace of God that saved me. To know that through the blood of Jesus Christ, I've been forgiven. But I need grace for today. I need grace for the challenges that I face and the warfare that, 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 that I am a part of. I need grace for the disappointments and the despair and the sickness and all the other stuff that happens on a continual daily basis. I need a grace of God to be able to withstand and to prevail against all of that. It comes from His presence and it comes through the portal of prayer. May we be provoked today to find our own secret place. Deuteronomy 29, 29 says, The secret things belong to the Lord our God, but those things which are revealed belong to us and our children forever. Oh, hallelujah. There are secret places and secret things and new dimensions in God that we have not yet laid hold of, that we have not yet become aware of, but He wants to reveal those things to us, not only for us, but for us and for our children forever so that they can walk in that power in that knowledge so that they my children and grandchildren can look back and say I remember when I was sick and granddaddy laid his hands on my head and I was instantaneously healed by the power of almighty God mm. they belong to us revealed to us and they belong to us and our children forever. There, there's a scripture in 1 Corinthians that, that I think is often pulled out of context and used incorrectly because we always use it at funerals and when people pass away. Do you think that 1 Corinthians 2 9 is talking about? The rewards of heaven that awaits us after we're gone from here? Not on your life. Because there are exceeding great and precious promises that we are to lay hold of now. Why do I need promises of God when I'm in His presence? Things that we can lay hold of those weapons that we use against the enemy and, and ensure our victory today. That we can be liberated from every captivity. Causing our spiritually blind eyes to see now. All the mysteries that are revealed to us in the secret place of prayer. 1 Corinthians 2.9 says, eyes not seen and ears not heard, neither is it even entered into the heart of men the things that God has prepared for those that love Him. He prepared things for me now. Things that I need now. But God reveals them to us by His Spirit. For the Spirit searches all things, even the deep things. We need that place in that portal of prayer where we understand the mysteries of God, of, not, of, of what He has prepared for us now. 
that causes us to be victorious over the battle that we're right now walking in. I don't need crowns. Uh, uh, when I get there, I'm going to surrender whatever I have to the feet of Jesus anyway. But I need power now. I don't need power when I'm in his presence. I need power now that to, to defeat the enemy and fight the good fight of faith and to stay strong and finish strong and faint not and continue to press on. I need that power now. So we go into that secret place. And at first, and it's the same for all new believers, so don't get discouraged, new converts. And we got a house full of them. Praise God. Because you go into that secret place with only a mustard seed faith. But you emerge with faith and virtue. Isn't that what Peter said? Be diligent. Add to your faith virtue. Every time you go into the secret place, every time you pass the portal through prayer, you get another glimpse of God in a whole new dimension. You emerge with something you didn't have before. We all have a mustard seed faith to begin with. But if we press in, we emerge with virtue. And then we go back again and we add to our virtue. Knowledge. Now we're armed with faith and virtue that causes us to look and walk like Jesus. And now we have the very knowledge of God and we're gaining wisdom on how to live this thing out for His glory. And none of us has got it perfect, so don't be looking at us thinking, oh, they got, they got it right. We don't. There may be some that beside you has got that, you know, that righteous look about them. You may have thought, well, they look down their nose at me. Let me tell you, they've got issues too. They've got issues too. They may never admit it, but they've got issues. I've got issues. But we're armed with faith. We go in and get virtue that causes us to look like Jesus. We gain the knowledge of God. We go again and find temperance that shows us how we ought to conduct ourselves in a world that's living in crisis. Going from crisis to crisis. But yet we emerge from that secret place of prayer, being able to move from glory to glory. Hallelujah. From victory to victory. Amen. You don't have to go around defeated, though you are warring against something that is monumental and, and powerful. It's not more powerful than Jesus. And to wallow in that and to complain about it and, and to murmur about it is really to diminish the, the God that you serve. We can, we can praise Him in all things, even though we don't praise Him for all things. We could fall off of a stool or a cabinet and break our, our, our ankle and, and be laid up for, for weeks and weeks and weeks on end, but we don't praise God for the fact that we fail. We praise Him in spite of the fact that we fail. Because it could have been worse. You could have hit your head. <laughs> Hallelujah. We keep going back to that secret place in the stairs where the king desires to reveal the fullness of his identity to the bride. And calls her away to that secret place behind the stairs. He wants her to know who he is. He doesn't want her love because he has power or he has great wealth or he has title or position. He wants her to love him for who he is. We emerge from that secret place under the stairs with patience and godliness and kindness 
And ultimately, according to Peter, we have brotherly love, charity. And that's the reason for the manifestation of the power of God. Do you know why God still wants to do miracles? Because it is proof that he still loves humanity. God wants to perform the miraculous. Not just because we want to see it. But because he wants to demonstrate his love for humanity still. That's the ultimate purpose for God doing the miraculous he did it through Jesus he did it through his disciples he's going to do it through you just as well if you are willing to spend the time in the portal of prayer we want God to come down and do it uh, mysteriously with, with some angelic being that we don't even see. And all the time he says, come into my place. Come sit on my lap for a while. Come let me impart to you who I am so that when you go, you can touch humanity in my name and for my glory. So that the world will know I still love them. The purpose of prayer is not to convince God to love us more. God already loved us. God gave His only begotten Son. Loved us. So loved the world that He already gave. Now He wants to use you to give. And we get... We get in our little Pentecostal jig around service and we feel our soul, body, will, and emotion gets touched by the power of God and we feel goosebumps and chills and that's wonderful, but that's not power. That goes away as soon as the music stops. And he's saying, if you would just... Sit on my lap a while. I would impart to you a new dimension of who I am. That you could go forth and show the world that I still love them. That is the portal of prayer. And prayer is the portal to his presence. And love is the ultimate result of his presence. Father, I thank you for your word today. I thank you for the fact that I know the Holy Spirit has used what has been spoken today to touch people's hearts and lives. And God, I declare that right now that people are going to become seriously hungry for more of you. Instead of seeing you move uh, uh, mysteriously and uh, and they want to be used of you. They want you to use them, oh Lord. They are truly your hands and feet. Now I pray God, through the power of the Holy Spirit, call each of us this week to a place of prayer. To a time of prayer. To a secret place where we only share with you, oh Lord, and you share with us. God, call us to that place and give us courage to enter in. That you might show us the mysteries like you did to Moses. But Lord, we don't just want to see the past. We want to see the present and the future. Of what you have in store for your children and for your church. Father... Go before them. All of the busyness, all of the interruptions, all the stuff that comes up that, that would try to prevent prayer. 
devil, just get out the way. Because we're going to that secret place this week. And if we can see six converts in one week, if we all prayed, we could see 60 next week. Oh, God. Call us. Call us to your side and put us in the cleft of the rock. In that secret place where you can reveal your identity to us. This is my prayer today in Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. Would you stand with me all over the house? If you're here this morning and you don't know Christ. If you're here this morning and you've never made a public profession of your faith I want you to come right now maybe you're already saved maybe maybe you've been praying at home maybe maybe you've been calling out to but you've never told anyone you've never made your faith public I want you to come right now and as you come you're making a bold statement that I have received Christ or I want to receive Christ this is that opportunity right now why don't you come go ahead and sing How about it, young, young people? How about it, older people? How about it, backslider? How about it, sinner friend? The miracle maker is here. Do you need a miracle in your life? Why don't you just come right now? We're going to anoint you and lay hands on you that you might experience the miraculous power of God. Do you need a miracle? A miracle in your marriage, in your home. Come on, don't, don't stay back there and miss your opportunity for a miracle. Don't stand back there and miss your opportunity for a miracle. Come on. Come on, elders. Come on, some Holy Ghost filled believers. We need to attend to prayer. Still coming. Still coming.
Thank you so much. Don't forget, tonight, 6 o'clock, I'm probably going to camp out on prayer for the next couple of weeks. I challenge you, find a place, a specific place to pray where you can be alone with God. God bless you. Have a great day in the Lord. We love you.